Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. I know we have some more folks coming through, but for those that are here, let's go, right? Let's get going. Um, last couple weeks have been rough on me. I don't know what's going on in the work. It's been very stressful, but I just got no energy. Maybe it's because I got older, too. I don't know. But just got no energy, so but that's all right. God still got me and pushed me here this morning because there's something out of here. We'll talk more about His work here in a little bit. But it's so good to have you this morning. If you would, let's open the word of prayer. Father God, we're truly thankful. We're thankful for this day, Lord. And Lord, just thank you for what you do and what you mean for each and every one of us. Lord, as we get ready to celebrate Easter, Lord, and, and the, the time that it was, Lord, the time it is, and the time we need to look toward, Lord, to continue to build our faith and strengthen our faith in you, Lord. We thank you for these opportunities to talk and witness to others. And Lord, we just thank you for the remembrances that you work in our lives every day, the miracles that you perform. Lord, we always never forget to thank you each and every day for every chance we have to breathe another breath, Lord, to take another step. We thank you for your love and your grace. We just thank you for this church. Thank you for the people, Lord, that make this church. Lord, we just thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to come and to be with us and to show us the way, Father God. We thank you for this past week and the Bible time that we had and the recharging of our batteries, Lord. Love you and we thank you for all that you do. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Birthdays and anniversaries this past week. Who had a birthday? We had Mr. Had Daniel Flake. Uh, Mr. Mrs. Mark Hobart had anniversaries. Say that Cook. She's back in the back. Uh, myself had a birthday yesterday and Miss Emily had a birthday yesterday. I always knew there was a connection between me and her. I just never realized what it was. We were born on the same day. That's an awesome, girl. And um, today is Sandy and I's anniversary, so happy anniversary, baby. Happy anniversary, baby. 29 wonderful years, so. All right. It's always good when you got married with a zero at the end of the year. That way it makes it easy for me to keep up as we go forward. Pretty, pretty dramatic. 
it, it was beyond measure as far as I'm concerned. And, and, and God spoke to me through her just like he did with the, the ones that spoke to us during our revival. So we thank you for that and those that made it. And hopefully Daphne will be able to give us a, an update as she finds out over the coming weeks. All right. Easter's coming. Easter's next week, as a matter of fact. Um, so this morning I'm going to touch on that a little bit. As I think we should. Not that we need a reminder because if you're Christian, it's on the internal clock anyway. Holy Spirit letting you know, you know that, that love gave us this opportunity to experience God for what He really is and what He wants us to be and also to give us hope. Give us hope. And the title of this was Love Hung on the Cross. John 3.16, of course, said God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son. We all believe in Him and not be lost, but have eternal life. We all know that. We learned that. We can recite it. But it's very important as we look forward. He looked around the hill and foresaw a scene. Three figures come on three crosses. We we'll know who they are, the thieves and, and Jesus Himself. Arms spread, heads falling forward, they moan with the wind. You can only imagine the pain and suffering that goes on through a crucifixion. Men clad in soldiers' garb sat on the ground near the trio. Women clad in sorrow huddled in front of the, at the foot of the hill, faces just soaked with tears. All heaven stood to fight, waiting on the command to come get the sun. All nature rose to rescue. All eternity posed to protect, poised to protect. But the Creator gave no command. It must be done, he said, and withdrew. The angel spoke again, but it would be less painful. In other words, if we could go now, take the son off the cross, so you don't have to see him and do it as pain. But God interrupted softly, and he says, but it wouldn't be love. Jesus hung on that cross on Calvary because he loved you. You know, sometimes we get caught up in our own little things, and, and, and we get short time. But he didn't hang on that cross just for living. And he didn't hang on that cross just for you. He hung on that cross for every human being. The ones that were there, the ones that you were coming. So if you think about it like that, we sit in our little worlds and we get all comfortable because we're happy, we're satisfied, we got our ticket punched. That's not what God wants. Yes, he would do it just for you. Jesus would do it all over again, I believe, for just one person. But he didn't. He didn't for everyone that could hear the word. Who can hear the word if we don't get off our hands and go share the word with them? And that's what I found so interesting about Gianna Thursday night. She had every reason in the world <coughs> to give up, go along with it, whatever, you know, whatever came, came. I mean, how many times did she say she had to learn to walk in like three times? Yeah. Through her original learning to walk through surgeries on the spine, and then having to do it just again recently at the age of 40 to 42 years old, learning to walk again, learning to be able to stand on her own again. She could have gave up many times. She didn't have that woe with the attitude. You know why? She got it. She knew that God spared her and continues to spare her because she's doing what he asked her to do. Spreading the gospel. Saving souls. And that's what we need to do as Christians. I know we get caught up, we get caught up in our lives and our work and everything else, but there's still so many opportunities for you to share Christ. One of the stories I really remember, and I'll, I'll be done with this and be done with it, but you know, she says that even with her physical uh, abilities being diminished because she has several palsy, she said she can use that to her advantage, though. But God uses that. Because she'd be somewhere and, and she'd say some big guy, you know, big burly guy, I just remember grew up and just being short with everybody. And she says she just kind of walks up to him and says, Sir, can I take your hand? Can you stay with me? She says she just melt her right there in her hand. So she could now proclaim God and share what God had in her heart for that man. We can all, no matter what our conditions are. I know I just started out by saying, Oh, it's been a rough week. I'm tired and hurting. I can still use me though. I can still talk. I can still hug. I can still reach a hand out if somebody needs a hand. So don't get caught up in your own world. God's giving you that breath every day. He's allowing you to take those steps. It's not just for you and what you can get out of it. He wants to use you. Allow 
They were still at the beat of the vessel. They're going to reach others. So here it is, Easter time. Everybody's got excitement in the air. Some people don't really understand what Easter truly means. They get excited for the baskets and the gifts and the nice meals. But we know better. God wants us to share that message with others. So, thank you for that. Now, go ahead, my I'll play here in front of the preacher. We go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to make mention, uh, I know I didn't get a chance to get with the teachers last week, with the revival and the group and everything else. Um, I'm, I'm leaning toward not having Sunday school next Sunday, since we have the early morning service, and then we'll go start service again at 10.30. You know, I'm scared of breakfast down there. Don't us and call. Don't us and call for hours. I'm, I'm afraid that if we try to do Sunday school in first, we're going to be rushed. People are going to possibly rush getting back, and we're going to cut our classes short anyway, trying to get out here and start our service at 1030. Now, if there's enough objection to that, because I don't want to, you know, say, hey, Lynn said we're not having Sunday school. If you feel strongly about it, you know, let's talk about it. But at this point, we'll let you know for sure. We're going to do an announcement at 11 this morning. But... I'm thinking about bypassing Sunday school next week. You just do an early morning service, your breakfast, and then coming back at 10.30 for the service. So think about that, pray about that, and, and let me know, baby, as you come by, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go that way. That being said, that's it. This is Mr. Class.